Welcome to the show, everybody watching. Hello, you are on the Canadian Comedy Network. Don't adjust the set. This is still the Canadian Comedy Network, but tonight we have a very special night. I'm very excited. Fred Durst, uh, rocker, rapper, limp biscuit front man, is here tonight, uh, taking your calls. Thanks for coming by, Fred. Hey, man. I'm just I'm just stoked to be, you know, be. Be out, be out again, man. You know. It's been yeah. A while. No, I, honestly, it's. Uh, I mean, it's been. It's. See that he came by. How, how? How's it going? What's. Uh... Well, you know, I'm just. I'm basically just hanging in there, man. I'm. You know, I'm working on a lot of stuff. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, rock limp biscuit. You know, biscuit, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I was uh, telling you just when you got here. I used to be in a, a rap group myself when I was a, in kid in Canada, so I. Uh, I wanted to ask you a few technical questions about, uh, you know, just about rap and rock and roll and how that all started together. Yeah, man. Well, far away, brother. I got a knowledge bank from here to fucking Jacksonville, Florida on that stuff, man. That's where you're from, right? Jacksonville? Or? Well, I'm from North Carolina. Okay. But I I moved down to Jacksonville, and uh, you, you got to excuse me, man. This the whole experience and everything, the whole... The music and the loud music and the, so many, you know, the pictures and, and girls and stuff, man. It, it, I'm really affected by it. So I'm kind of, I get a little sensitive when I talk about it. But yeah, I'm, I, we, I moved to Jacksonville. And then I, then that's when I met the fellas, man. Uh -huh. the band. Yeah, and that, that must have been an exciting, exciting time. I mean, I, I was in a rap group when I was a teenager and I remember listening to Public Enemy. Oh, and yeah. And uh, I remember Takes when a nation of millions to hold back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Flavor Flav, he was oh, up here a few man. weeks ago. Don't believe the hype. It's a sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now um, we're gonna be taking calls for Fred tonight, so give us a call right now on the telephone three two three eight four five nine nine seven six or on Skype. But well, uh, organized rhyme, right? Uh, yeah, I'm amazed that you know about that. Man, I know a lot about you, man. It's the internet. It's it's scary. You can find out anything. Really? Did, did you see that on YouTube or something like that? Um, no, I found out from it when doing some research a long time ago before I did your uh, first time. Yeah, here, that was you know. fun. I appreciated you doing that, yeah, too. Yeah, man, and uh, Tony Hawk was there. Oh, was he there? That, you yeah, know, it's know. funny. Tony Hawk was here yesterday. Yeah. What a Damn, bizarre man. coincidence. There's a synergy there. And you're, you skateboard as well because yeah. you brought me this uh, Lucero deck as a gift. Yeah, man, I love skateboarding, and I know you're... True hard skateboard. I figured you could run that through the sink a couple of times later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, do a little uh, fingerboard, finger flipping, huh? I know. I only know that from uh, Future Primitive. Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Second uh, Bones Brigade video. Yeah, I love that one. Future Primitive was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, An Animal Chin was, of course, followed that up. Animal Chin was a little more uh, ambitious. You know, they were going for film style. You know, story like yeah. full on. I loved it. Yeah, I love that. Ramp. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God, I'm a ramp skater, not a street skater. You know that? I, I have a mini ramp in my house. Oh, really? Eddie Radigi built it, and Ray Bones Rodriguez, as a matter of fact. Really? You have a uh, mini ramp here in L.A.? Yeah. Oh, well, it's a uh, 24 feet wide, six foot tall. Wow. With 10 foot transition, so it's real smooth. It's got skate light on it, some steel cope, and maybe come over shred it with me one day. I want. would. I would love to come shred. That would be mini sweet. Ramp. Tom yeah. Green, shred my ramp, man. Be fat. Yeah, I can, can skate a mini. I can skate a mini ramp. I mean, I I, I broke my leg a couple of years ago skateboarding. So. No shit. Yeah, so I... Uh, Doing I, what? I was bullying over an orange hat. It was a, a, a orange construction helmet. The lamest thing ever. An orange construction helmet right at the bottom of the street here. I was saying, oh, okay, I'm going to get more consistent with my ollie. So I started ollieing over it. I'm ollieing over it. And I just was practicing, you know, trying to get some exercise. My foot came off the board came down on top of the orange plastic construction oh. helmet and slipped off and I just got it on video. I'll show you the video. I gotta see that, man. I hate seeing stuff like that. I don't watch any gore, anything gross or bones snapping out. The skate videos, when those things come, man, it really fucks with me. When the, like someone's finger gets all twisted yeah. out of shape. No, I broke a finger loud too. I gotta quit skateboarding. Okay, let's take a quick call on Skype. Before, uh, we have a couple minutes before our first commercial break. You're on the air with Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit. You have a question. What's up, man? Steve O, Fred, Tom, how y'all doing tonight? Are Good. Yeah, tonight. Good. How, how about you throw a quick question uh, for for Fred here? Sure. Um, I like I'll make it really quick. Um, 
how are you going to overcome all these obstacles you've had, like stereotypes of saying that you're selling out? And are you going to be doing anything with Deftones or Chino Marino lately or anytime soon? <laughs> um, yeah, man. I like mustard and Cornishers and jalapenos and uh, basically on the blue sandwich. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of what I like. I love the Deftones, man. Chino is badass. Team Sleep, amazing. I have every single Deftones piece of music ever put out to be able to have a handle on. And I like those guys a lot, and I would love to make some music with them. What um, is, is uh, what is some of the great uh, music right now that you're listening to? Oh, hell, let's see. Well, I'm very diverse. I have different multiple personalities or mood swings. Yeah. You know, I'm very sensitive to music, so I love sad music, for one. I love old-school hip-hop, and I love crazy, just head-banging madness and punk rock. Yeah. And I love 80s music and 70s music. So right now, the new stuff I like, I'd have to say that... Um, oh, my God, let me... I have a brain fart here. I love Slipknot. It really, really do something to me inside, make me nutty. And um, I love Lamb of God. And uh, I can't stop listening to, you know, DRI and SNFU and TSO and old all the old, stuff, school, huh? old punk stuff. But cool. then again, I can't get away from some Treacherous 3 yeah. and some like Disco 3 before they were the Fat Boys. Yeah. You know that was their name before they were the Fat Boys? Disco 3? Disco 3, the human beatbox. I didn't know that. That was one of my first records. I got Crushin' on vinyl for Christmas. That record Fat Boys is, Crushin'. That is a good record. <laughs> Not a lot of people would know about that. You should hip them to, to the Fat Boys. YouTube, Fat Boys Crushin'. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with Fred Durst. We're talking about music. We're talking about hip-hop, rock and roll. You're watching the Comedy Network. Give us a call. It's playing. Is that your beat? I made that beat. Yeah, I made that song. The beat is dope. I made that song. It was originally the song on my show in Canada uh, when I was uh, younger, and then on MTV, it goes, uh, "This is the Tom Green Show. It's mm -hmm. not the." Yep. I, I make music. That. I make beats. You right still day. making a lot of uh, beats, like hip hop beats? Do you do that at home when you're? Uh, yeah, I got. It. I work on Logic. See, I saw you work on the MPC One Thousand and. Yeah. You know, he guys, I don't know if you know, but he's he's serious, man. He makes killer beats, and he's got a studio back here. He's playing me some stuff, and I got a little studio at home, too, and I, I make beats all the time, and I, I make them on Logic, so I, I kind of get in there and, you know, I just nutty because, I, you know, I don't have the whole band with me all the time. Right. I, I'm home by myself, you know, sitting around in my... My speedos and shit, and just <laughs> I just man, there's some freedom about just making beats and stuff in the middle of the night. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I can completely relate to that. I love it. It's very therapeutic. It is, man. Because yeah. we're musicians at heart. Well, and I mean, you are, you are. I mean, you this are is, too. Yeah, you've had. Uh, obviously, I've always had dabbled in it as a hobby. But what, what might have been a, an amazing experience to have such incredible success with music, such as you know, I mean, how did that all start? You you were a tattoo artist for. Corn is that what I, what, what the story goes oh. or is that no well, I was a tattoo artist mm -hmm. uh, down in Jacksonville Florida and I was doing tattoos and I was a big fan of corns and they opened up for sick of it all at the milk bar and I was like I gotta fucking meet those guys man because their sound was so scary yeah and fucking cool so I got to the show and they were opening up for them and wasn't anybody there. I was like, dude, don't you guys understand? This is corn, man, with a K. Yeah. And so, I I, I was there, and um, not at, not not corn, not corn with a C, of course. No, with a K, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> with a K and a backwards R. Yeah. I was like, that's fucking. I mean, I loved it. I loved everything about it, man.